Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is Let Me Boy You To Sleep and today is Q&A Friday Q&A Friday Welcome My name is Jason Newland Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now, I've got a few questions. I've got a few questions, you know. Blimey, I've been recording a lot of stuff lately. I'm just trying to go down to the... I had a question from last week, but I'm trying to find it. But I do know where it is. Where is it? Where is it? it, 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 it. Q and A Friday. Okay, this is 11th of September. Uh, da, 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 da. I saw. Okay. And you go, okay, right, so that's that's fine. Maybe it was sent as a... That's good news. So I'm just having a look. Uh, I get this in there. Oh, okay, I can't find it. Nope. Mm -mm -mm. Right. Brown. Oh, I can't find it. Where is it? No. The only other thing that maybe it was via email. So let's have a look. Perhaps I could have uh, done this before. Before I started, but um, right. Did you do this? Okay. Nope. Okay. Where can I okay? No, I can't find it. So sorry. I'm just going to have to do the ones that I've got on here. There's quite a few questions, to be fair. But I'm sure I saw some questions that... That's the thing. if Because I upload a fair bit of stuff. I'm doing like a daily recording now. I'm losing track a little bit of the messages from previous things. So... If I've missed out your question, please be sure to include it for next week when I put the, you know, are there any questions? Because that's the best place for me to find the stuff. It's just that I, it's my own uh, shortcomings, really. I should perhaps could be a bit more organised. <laughs> it's probably not going to happen, to be fair. So, I've got quite a few questions, to be fair. To be fair, to be fair, to be fair. So I've got one from Hillary, one from Chris, Alison, Jen, Nicola, Nicole, sorry, Kate, Dimitri, and Dimitri. So, yeah, so there's quite a few questions. So I'll, st I'll just start at the top. Hillary asks me, by the way, if anyone's, oh, I've got a, um, a Facebook group, that's what I'm reading now. It's a good place to ask questions and to contact me, basically. Also to... Um, you know, I post stuff in there that I don't post anywhere else. Uh, pictures of Vinny and just bits and bobs. So if you... It's a good, you know, it's a good place if you, if you want to ask me something. That's a good place to go to. Jason Newland's Boring Group on Facebook 
it's private group but of course you can just join and uh, you'll be accepted of course of course of course of course and my website jasonnewland.com I've been working on it today it's getting there it is getting there trust me I've now got every day that I do a new recording I post the video on there so I always also upload it that's the question that's the question I remember now is it was it oh blimey I know who asked the question let me just look to see who it was Christine I'm pretty certain it was Christine asked me this but it was on a different post so I'm not sure where asked me why I don't upload the latest videos or upload the latest recordings on YouTube uh, I do I do do that uh, every day well, not, well at the moment it's every day every time I make a new recording I create a video out of the recording and I upload it onto YouTube admittedly they might get a little bit lost amongst all the archives that I'm also uploading but what I've been doing is I post a video onto Facebook as well the link you know to there and I also post a video on my website so every time I do a new recording I post a video on my website as well as the playlist with the latest recordings so I've only got the latest uh, the recordings from September on the playlist for latest recordings and um, because I had too many on there who was going back to like May and the playlist wasn't happy it got it kept kind of smoking a bit because it was a bit too I don't mean the cigarette I mean it was just overwhelmed by it so I just got from September and then when we get to October I'll change it again and just start again from beginning of October. So, yeah, so um, all the YouTube videos, I do make a new one every time. I say that, I mean, it's, there is a chance I might have forgotten, but I've been trying to upload the new ones for probably the last couple of months, I'd say, if not more. Yeah, so this, but because I've also been uploading the archives of the Let Me Boy to Sleep, I'm now up to I think 300. Every time I upload a new video, I also upload or make available 10 of the archive Let Me Boy to Sleeps ahead of it. So, but I don't notify the subscribers on YouTube about that video maybe I forgot to notify the subscribers about the new video as well it's possible but anyway it's there it definitely is there on the YouTube channel I'm still in the on the kind of still trying to update everything it's going to take till the end of the year before all my videos or all, all the recordings are now there and then then I'll decide what to do next year uh, I might just continue to make videos of the audio but I might 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 look at maybe making some videos of me videoing it video you know uh, <laughs> talking pictures whatever you want to call it so the first question is from oh yeah if you did listen to my healing Thursday can you let me know what you think because um, I don't know to be honest uh, I was doing it for a reason it wasn't just some random thing I know what I'll do um, and yesterday's it was a, an introduction but I've come to realize that whether good or bad whether you know I don't know if it's a good or bad thing but 
the way I the way I do, do things, the way I make recordings is like this. Now, it seems to be the best way for me to. Um, yeah, it's just doing in this kind of style, chatting rather than sitting here. Um, I don't know how to explain it. It just it it might not be the right way to do it, but it seems to be the way that my brain activates that I can. You know, I like to use information that I've learnt and to try and incorporate that into the kind of, uh, you know, recording, like Healing Thursday. Because it's not just a... Although it is a Let Me Bore You To Sleep. So you can still listen to it as a Let Me Bore You To Sleep recording and it can still bore you to sleep. It's just a little bit more focused on the subject of healing uh, and yeah I would say maybe self improvement maybe self help maybe motivational I don't know could be a mixture of those things I suppose well that was a <laughs> that was very monotone wasn't it it could be a mixture of those things I hope you're as excited as I am mmm so, Hillary is asking the first question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, blimey, I know this question because I did reply. I didn't reply the answer, but yeah. Um, okay, maybe a bit personal. So, understand if you don't want to answer it, but do you still have a relationship with your two older brothers? And the second question is, what is your favourite crisp flavour? And that made me laugh because it's such a such a difference between the two questions. <laughs> it couldn't get further apart than those two questions. Um, I'll answer the crisp flavour first. I don't eat crisps anymore. I can't. I can't eat crisps anymore. Um, but if I was to eat crisps and just. For those that aren't in the UK, you might you might not know what crisps are. You possibly do, but you might not. So basically, it's what you call chips if you're in America. Um, you might have a different name for them if you're in China or um, in different parts of Europe or in India or Australia. I'm guessing Australia would be the same as us. In the, in England, I'm guessing, or the UK, but I don't, you know, I don't know. So, what well, I do wonder though, because in America, you got fries. We call fries fries, but fries are really, really slim. You know, things that you get with McDonald's. Now, you don't get fish and fries get fish and chips and I know that you have fish and chips in America so you do also call call them chips so you should know yeah you, I guess you you know that anyway but with crisps it's I remember there was an advert talking about crisps and the bloke that was saying it kept saying crips this is an this is an, an actor advertising the crisps and it is a bit of a weird word it's a bit of a it's hard not to have a lisp when you say crisps but he was saying crisp 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 crisps and I was like am I the only one noticing this I know it's not life changing and it's not really gonna it's not gonna make a huge difference to the world my observation of him saying crips instead of crisps. But considering it's an advert for crisps, wouldn't you want someone that could say the word crisps correctly? Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. My favourite crisps going back, I always like, I say flavour, I think, 
okay, I would probably say salt and vinegar as far as Walker's crisps, like the original, the original Walker's salt and vinegar. Catch a packet of that salt and vinegar crisps on the right day and it's almost perfect. Cheese and vinegar. Is it cheese and vinegar and cheese? Cheese and vinegar. That can be... Cheese and onion. Vinegar. Salt and vinegar. Is it salt and vinegar? Anyway, they, they're okay. Uh, never been... Never been... A, this makes me hungry now. Never been a huge fan of the, like, meat ones. Chicken is not so bad, but... I always kind of felt you can taste the additives. Doesn't taste like chicken at all. They they taste nice, but it doesn't taste like chicken. Um, I don't think it tastes like cheese either. The cheese, personally, depending on which kind of crisps you have, or should I say, crisp. There is. Uh, Quavers I quite like because they're they're very similar to poppadoms, aren't they? But flavoursome, flavoursome poppadoms, but little ones, little poppadoms. So I quite like them, um, or did. Okay, my favourite what's it's what's it's normal flavour, cheese, cheese flavoured what's it's. That's been my favourite crisp, probably. Yeah, I like squares as well. Squares, and that would be plain. So, plain walkers, plain crisps. But if I was going to choose, if it was an accompaniment with a sandwich, I would probably go for either quavers Cheesy what's its or mm, squares or walkers plain or salt and vinegar. I think it's just salt and no, not salt, no, plain, plain. So I would, yeah, I mean, there used to be, there used to be, I mean, I'm going back to. My memory is probably when I was about seven or eight. Crisps where you could, you'd open a packet and there'd be a little sachet of salt. And you'd, I mean, I don't know why, but you know, you put it in it and you just, you shake it. So you'd empty the salt in and you shake it. And it was a lot of effort. <laughs> Even then, it's like, I don't want to have to do this. I just want to eat, open them and eat them. It's like buying a hot dog and then having to cook it. It's like, no. You know? It's like, well, here's a sandwich, but you have to put your own butter on. No, I don't want that. So, yeah, I used to get very angry about that. It's like, can you... I want... I want Watsits. You can't have Watsits. You know the good thing I like about Watsits is you get a lot in a packet. They ain't stingy. I mean, nowadays, I would say a lot of things, sweets, chocolate, whatever, it's like, you seem to get, mm, I think maybe a little bit less than we used to get. But then my hands are bigger. You know, maybe they were just, they just looked bigger because I had tiny hands and my mouth was smaller. No, actually, my mouth's always been the same size. My mouth, my eyes were tiny and my eyes got bigger. My ears shrunk. My ears were much much bigger than they are now. They shrunk. And um, when I was about 15, I grew feet. So, yeah, I was a bit, a bit different from the average. Okay. I'm going to keep on the subject of crisps. 
and that's it really i don't i'm not i don't eat crisps at all now but if i did let's say if i was like okay i'm gonna have a cheat i mean i can every now and then so if i was gonna have a little cheat and i was gonna eat some crisps it'd be cheese what's it's cheesy what's it's that would be it yeah that would be it that would be the one i go for or quavers but as an accompaniment with a sandwich i think plain um walker's crisps are quite a nice accompaniment yeah or salt and vinegar that can be quite nice so as far as my brothers well i've got one younger brother two older brothers one half brother when i'm one um so one stepbrother one stepsister but i call them brother and sister but they're the same age as my little brother and he's a half brother but i still i don't think him as a, as a half brother he's my brother just got a different mother my brother from a different mother literally and do i have a relationship with them not really to be honest um no no i can't i've got nothing i can really add to that without the thing is with these podcasts is i'll talk about myself because you know i'd say i'm probably an oversharer that's possibly a thing i probably am an oversharer when it comes to talking about my life and what i do and stuff like that none of it's interesting but it's still i probably say too much but and i'll talk about my dad and i'll talk about my stepmoms and stuff like that but i try to keep it um civil you know what i mean i try i don't i try not to say anything bad about people i talk about my little brother and you know i don't say bad things or anything like that but the thing is the there's you know there's there's reasons there's a lot of stuff involved with uh my family uh you know my my brothers and that and me going back to early early childhood and considering how much we went through together we're we're not close at all really um we all went our separate ways and yeah that's it really i haven't seen i haven't seen one for 17 years 2007 what's that 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 so one i haven't seen for 17 years and the other one i haven't seen for 30 years so one i haven't seen for 17 years the other one i haven't seen for 30 years see so yeah i guess the answer is no then um don't really have a, a relationship i mean they're still my brothers that never changes you know that can't change it's that's just that's in stone isn't it they're my brothers and i share dna with them i'm i share their blood kind of i don't know you know what i mean like we're we're connected and and we did have such a it's kind of weird because i kind of feel there should be be a bond there really after everything that we went through but i don't know i i'll be honest i've not really been much used to them really uh, i'm not yeah i guess i don't know it's it's a weird one it's a really weird one to i'm glad i got this at the beginning because then we can brighten things up not not there's a lot more i could say but i don't want to say it because it's not 
because if I start talking about that, then it's about them, and I don't want to talk about them because, first of all, they've got no right of reply, and secondly, it's I got I don't really have any right to be discussing them, you know. I don't because it's their personal stuff. So, and there's still love in my heart for them because they're my brothers. So yeah, it's I wish them well, whatever they're doing wherever they are and I hope they're okay and it's just weird that well my 24 my oldest brother would be did I say I'm 24 blimey it's 24 2024 Bl imagine if I was 24 could you imagine I could eventually have a successful career doing this if I was 24 now by the time I'm my age I, c I might actually have made I might have made an, a success out of doing this because that's 30 years in 30 years well, I've been doing it 16 years no 18 years and I've not got that far have I uh, ok fair enough I was going to say I started when I was 35 doing recordings and podcasts and videos so yeah it was only 11 years after the 24 okay forget that then I mean you don't know by, by the time I'm 60 things might have blossomed obviously not my body <laughs> it's definitely going in, a, in the opposite direction to blossoming but yeah wow so there, that, that's it really. So I've, I've answered that question, I think. But I do wish them well, and it's just kind of strange to think that I've got a brother that's 58 in a couple of days' time, I think. Another brother who's 56, and my little brother who's eight years younger than me. So, what does that make him? 46? Wow. Yeah, 46 years old. 46. Can't wait till he's 50 so I can make fun of him for being old. Which sounds stupid considering I'll be 58. <laughs> oh dear. So, the next question is from Chris. I've been listening to you for probably almost the better part of a decade. Wow. And you're still listening. Why? <laughs> How can you put up with me for a whole decade? I mean, that's over six years. I just love it. It's like people find, no, a decade's ten years. Yeah, which is over six years. I'm sticking to that joke. I've been doing it for since I was a kid. It just, I don't know. Because I love it when people correct me and like, well, you didn't need to correct me. You know, if I say to Vinny, which I do sometimes, oh, good girl. But he's not a girl. I know he's not a girl. Why are you telling me he's not a girl? Do you think I don't know that? Like, but you, but you said good girl. Like I accidentally said it. Like I would accidentally call him a good girl you know not realising oh it's like no I did it on purpose or I remember I, at this place I lived in I was renting a room one of many 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 50 odd rooms that I've lived in over the years <sighs> and uh, I was talking to the landlady and I was just chatting to her and I said oh it's got a pop to the little girl's room which is a euphemism for going to the toilet you know, you little boys' room, little girls' room. It's just, you know, it's a, just a little... I don't know. It's just something that some people say. And uh, she said, don't you... Really seriously, though, don't you mean the little boys' room? I just laughed and walked away. It's like, I know what I said. I'm not going to accidentally say little girls' room, am I? Of course I said it on purpose. I was... I was attempting a very, very, very minor 
minor piece of humor minor the thing is what makes me laugh is their reaction when they correct me that makes me laugh so it's kind of why I do it really so okay uh, yeah I've been li you've been listening to over a decade still loving just still love listening to you thank you Chris I'd like to ask you if you think your style of podcasting has changed since oh yeah has changed over the last couple of years you know what I have wondered that myself I have and I would say the best per people to really answer that is those of you that have been listening to me for a while. Has my style changed? Am I, do I do things differently to how I used to do them? I think my voice is a bit deeper now because I went through puberty last year. But I do wonder if it's, is it different? I really am not sure. It maybe I'm a little bit more focused now. More over, you know, I'd say probably over the last few months, this year even, I've got I had a bit of a. It was a it's a difficult time at the beginning of the year, but I managed to sort of get through that, and I think. Add in a bit of structure to my life. So having these recordings like Q&A Friday, every Friday, you know, onwards now, forever. <laughs> um, maybe not forever, but, I, you know, that's going to be the plan, just to do Q&A Friday every Friday, Sunday papers every Sunday, Monday's boring objects, do that every Monday. Trivia Tuesday, every Tuesday. Whisper Wednesday, every Wednesday. Healing Thursday, every Thursday. And Bugger All Saturday, every Saturday. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything on a Saturday. Uh, I might have Saturday off. I don't know. I mean, we're looking at three hours three hours maybe up to four hours work it takes me every day to do a recording so there's the recording bit so setting up is easy so that's just takes a few minutes there's the recording um i do i mean one of the differences i would say chris is the recordings are longer i'm not i've not tried to make them longer um, there's no uh, the Q&A Fridays tend to be longer because of the questions so but I don't keep my eye on the clock unless there's something important happening so you know if there's something on TV I want to watch which is well normally it would just be the boxing so if there's boxing being streamed and I start doing a podcast. Well, okay, let's say, for example, on Saturday, I think the boxing starts at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So if I decide to do a recording tomorrow afternoon, and I start at, let's say, 1 o'clock, I know that I'm going to need to finish at least by half past 2, which gives me time to take... This one, little Viddy, O U T for a W A L K, and he's he's asleep. I'm just cuddled up to me right now. So that would be, yeah. I need to keep an eye on the time for that. But generally, I seem to be, it seems to be lasting for about an hour and a half. The recordings if not longer I don't know why that is maybe it's because I'm a bit more relaxed with it and uh, I really 
really hardly ever watch television apart from just catching up on the news I'm, I'm not I don't have a routine of watching TV programs at a certain time like I used to do like EastEnders for example I'd watch that all the time although ooh, although Big Brother's coming back on TV in October and I'll be watching that every night well, every night it's on I'll be watching it so and I'll be watching it when it's on as well so that's a definite oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes oh yes he's snoring uh, yes yeah, so there's the just remember what I was talking about so let's say the recording lasts for an hour and a half and then the editing, processing, uploading and then also making a video and all that stuff. So that's another hour and a half at least. So that's three hours a day I'm spending per recording. So it's in a way giving me a bit of structure which I noticed when I was making the Let Me Bore You To Sleep recordings pretty much every day a while back. That structure of waking up in the morning, coming in here, going to do a wee wee first, coming in here, and doing the editing and all that stuff. And then once they were processed, ready to upload, then I could start uploading them. And then I would go and get me breakfast. So that would be probably an hour, hour and a half. It depends. And then I could upload them while I was eating my breakfast. So there's not a lot involved in that. But then I need to make an image and process that part. So there's, it's probably about an hour and a half of actual work. But probably a couple of hours, two and a half hours. Yeah, so... With the uploading, including the video, you're probably looking at one and a half, three, probably four hours a day. But an hour of that is just the uploading where I don't really have to do anything. The computer just does that bit. Or the internet. So there's that structure that I think may be useful and starting to do regular daily recordings for a particular thing although well, they'll all be different you know each trivia Tuesday will be different hopefully next next week's will be a bit more organised I'll get a bit more prepared um, the boring objects I will ask, I will look again, I'm not sure what one, what a subject I'm going to talk about, or what object I'm going to talk about. Q&A Fridays are established now, so on a th Wednesday I just post the same post really, basically that time again, any questions for Q&A Friday. So, I don't know, in, <laughs> in answer to your question, which I haven't answered, I don't know. Has my style of podcasting changed? Uh, I don't know about over the last couple of years, but I'd say it's changed since I started doing it. Uh, I'd say the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcasts have changed since I started doing them, which was... I think it was February or March 2018. I think so. It's it's hard to know really. It's it doesn't feel any more like I'm talking to strangers. I know there's they may well be hundreds thousands even around the world listening to me who I don't know who people are listening to the various different recordings I do you know over a month there might be 
lots of people that I've, you know, but it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel, it feels like I'm talking to, in some ways it feels like I'm talking to that 100, 188 people on my Jason Newland's boring group on Facebook. It's like I'm just talking to them. Although I know I'm not, I know that there's a lot more people that are listening to this that aren't on the Facebook group. But it feels it feels quite cosy. Does that make sense? I don't know why. It just feels mm, you know? Mm. <laughs> it feels mm. So yeah. Yeah, that's that's it. I don't I don't know. I think I'd really need to get feedback on that from you, or whether it's Chris or whoever else is listening. Who ha, ha, do you think that the podcast, my style, has changed? I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't really listen to the old stuff. I don't even listen to the new stuff. I mean, once it's I listen to it when I'm editing it. I end up listening to quite a bit of it. And, you know, I have to edit out this one's barking and just make sure there's no weird sounds. Just sort of make sure it sounds okay. And I don't, you know, listen through the whole thing because it lasts too long. I can't sit here for an hour and a half without falling asleep listening to me. Although I, I did listen to a recording of me the other day. I, I was in bed and I fell asleep. There's no way in the world I could listen to myself without drifting off. So, I'm not even sure what my style is or if there is a style. I'm just me now. This is just me. There's no... You know, I guess it depends on my mood as well. You know, I'm not going to... Sometimes I'll be very silly. Sometimes I'll be a bit more serious. I try not to be too serious, but sometimes I'll be super, super silly and ridiculous. Sometimes, sometimes I'll do silly voices. Sometimes I'll have some random conversation between two people that's me and it goes on for way too long. So that that stuff happens, but it happens organically. There's no plan in it. I don't plan what I'm going to say from one second to the next. Uh, the only real planning or organization is, I mean, for this, for example, there's the questions. I generally, I don't know, some, yeah, sometimes I don't even look at the questions before the day sometimes I do so there's no there's no right or wrong for that one I just do whatever I want I'm just happy to get the questions so it gives me something to something to answer because without the questions there'd be no Q&A Friday although there was one week it, one, one week no Vinny come on there's a dog screaming outside Um. The, oh yeah, I did a and a Friday with Vinny. Vinny asked me questions. I did that because I, I just left it too late to ask the questions from people. So that, that was okay. So I can always fall back on a bit of silliness sometimes. So I don't know if the style has changed. I'm really not sure. I don't. Th I don't. I'm not, I'm not even. I don't think there's any style involved. To be honest, it's just me talking. But I might be wrong. I mean, maybe there's an obvious difference that I'm not aware of, or I'm because I'm doing it. I just haven't noticed. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. So I hope I've answered your question, but I'm not. I mean, other than they're longer than they used to be and it feels a bit more personal like cosy 
almost one-on-one kind of conversation, kind of, you know, like a pri- almost like a private conversation. Compare, uh, yeah, before it wasn't. It was, I guess, when I first started, I was just talking at people. Now I feel almost like I'm talking to you, not at you. Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. I'm making it up. Uh, so Alison, thank you for that. Alison is the next one, the next Q question. I've always been fascinated by your memory for dates and years. When you tell stories or even remember a song or movie, you seem to know what year it was, even if it was in the 80s or 90s. Have you always been so good at remembering those details? Thanks, Alison. Well, I don't actually remember date dates, as in necessarily the the dates, like 4th of August or whatever. I I remember, like, you know, birthdays, only a few birthdays, like family birthdays, but I can usually remember like a period uh for example i can tell you when i watched bill and ted's excellent adventure i was stay it was around it was a summertime 1990 i was living in my dad's house for a little while he wasn't really there much cuz he was with his girlfriend who you know he got married to in the end um and I actually taped the full dialogue, the full audio of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure because I loved the way they were talking. I don't know why, I just loved it, absolutely loved it. And was trying to talk like them. Just, I wanted to learn how to do it. it became a little bit obsessed for a little while. So things like that, I remember and but and there's things connected so those certain aspects of being in that house things that I did at that time so during 1990 I kind of 1989 the summer and then 1990 summer were two quite good summers for me and or spring onwards so spring through to the summer though two quite good periods and I remember lots of things that happened during that time I don't know how I think okay things like girlfriends I've had where I've uh, lived jobs I've had I used to recall it at night sometimes like many 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 times I don't know why I don't honestly it wasn't like purposely trying to get myself to sleep because I've never had a huge issue with getting to sleep I've occasionally like everyone does occasionally but I've been all right with that. I've, I'm just very lazy as a person. I never more than about ten minutes away from snoring. Um, it's mm, I remember. It's, I think it's mapping. I map it out in my mind. So, and the only way to map out where I've lived is by remembering the years and then remembering roughly the months or the period it's not always the months but some, some if it's spring summer winter you know if it's something that's happened near Easter so I remember when I moved into the was a few things that happened during springtime so I moved into my flat above the chip shop and I remember eating hot cross buns. So it must have been Good Friday. So I moved in 
literally that week or that weekend. So I was having hot crust buns and a cup of tea with my friend Neil, who came round. In 1990, I moved into my dad's around April time. So I got offered a job doing canvassing again, but which is what I was doing in 1989. And it got me out of London because I wasn't enjoying my experience being in London. Although I did go back to London the next year for the next 12 years or whatever, 11 years. But, you know, it's... I remember the moment when I decided I want to be a stand-up comedian. I was sitting in a bath. And I looked down and I it, I made myself laugh. <laughs> And I thought, well, if that could make me laugh, imagine what. No, I, I, I remember I was in the bath, and I thought, I want to be, a, I want to be a comedian. I just decided because I was just thinking about my life, and I was thinking about the journaling that I used to do. I used to like to write, I used to like to write jokes, and used to. I was, I would say, fairly obsessed with. Not obsessed, but really into stand-up comedians. I had lots of DVDs, or actually videotapes really at that time, of stand-ups back in 89, 88, 89. And I think 1990, that's when I started buying CDs and albums and I was going to London every time I got paid I'd go to London and go to one of the big stores the music stores HMV, Virgin or Tower Records and I was doing night shift at that time in a factory with meters and then it reminds me I did three times I worked at that place three times I lived at my dad my dad's house three times for a short period of time and it's everything kind of connects together so in some ways I've got a better memory of a lot of things that happened in the possibly the the 80s the late 80s compared to the last 10 years because the last 10 years I've been living in one place I've been seeing the same people it's it's very different from how I used to live my life you know, I used to move around a lot not, not necessarily around the country but I used to I didn't stay in one room because it was mainly rooms I lived in, didn't stay in one room for more than three years or so. That's about the maximum. Well, let, let's work this out. I stayed in one place. It was the summer, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001. Yeah, so maybe three and a half years in that place. So three and a half years probably the maximum I ever lived anywhere until I moved here. Although I moved into, when I moved out of the place I was living in when I was at university, I got kicked out of there. You know, I've been evicted a few times. I'm, tr I'm just trying to think, how many times have I been evicted? See, th this is, gives you an example of how my brain works for memory, remembering things, okay? So I'll go through the process just to, just to uh, give you an example. I mean, so I think about how many times I've been evicted. That, that came up because I started thinking of two places I've been evicted of, because I've mentioned two of those places already. Without, you know, so now I'm thinking, okay, when did I get first get evicted? My first eviction 
really was when I was staying at my step grand's because I was sleeping on a floor on a like a camping bed for nearly well it was probably about 10 months and they were moving so I had to move out so evicted but not in a kind of I didn't get an eviction letter or anything but like we're moving you got no choice get out kind of but without harshness I don't think I can't remember so I got evicted from there but it was it was kind of a, a gentle eviction the chip shop when I left up that job I got evicted I had to get out and then I moved into my dad's so there's a there's I can tell you every single place I've lived in from the age of seven and some people say oh well I can do that as well yeah but it's been a lot of places a lot should we do it come on let me do it right so from the age of seven what well, six children's home then I moved there's a white house that my dad my stepmom my brothers and me and their her um, mum so that was the second place third place was the council house so that was I like that place and then we moved to a big house and then I moved out of there to the flat where I was sleeping on the camper bed moved back to my dad's house the big house that he was living in but there was no heat no food nothing so I moved back to my step nans because I needed to eat and I was cold it was winter it was oh, proper cold and then I and I was I suppose at this point I was 16 yeah I'd have been 16 at this point probably so or maybe if, no blimey no probably still 15 because it was yeah it was cold at night so it wouldn't be cold it was just during the daytime it was fine just at night it was cold and it was just a really cold house and then I moved into the chip shop which was above the yeah the flat above the chip shop and you know going through the timeline that would be April end of March April time 1987 moved out of there around April 1988 and moved into my dad's for a short period got a job in a yeah, got a, for, so while I was living there got a job in the co-op moved into that flat above there so that was the third place I got evicted from because she got evicted and because I was living there I got evicted with her and from there I moved into a flat no into a room on the seafront then I moved into another room on the seafront and I think I then moved into another room on the seafront I think this is where I get a little bit muddled a bit now because I used to have it all organised but it's just remembering where I went and so I was working there then I left because I worked in a factory I just turned 18 and I left there and I went and worked in a pub and this was 1988 so it would have been 1988 the Christmas period just turned 18 in the end of August worked in that pub horrible horrible didn't didn't like it and then while I was working there I was living in this place and the yeah so I was still living there but something happened so I had to get out of there it was I wasn't evicted but I had to get out because of 
there was uh, an incident and I know you want to know what happened but I'm not going to I have talked about it before actually anyway I moved into my dad's temporarily and I was working on the docks I had a job here in a transport haulage or whatever oh, t I was terrible at that job he evicted me <laughs> he did he he wanted me out I, d I did something that annoyed him I don't know what it was but he, he asked me to get out so I did I moved into a place which was up the road from the, the it was someone I met in the co-op so I lived with her and this was what 1989 during probably from about April time onwards into the summer at this point I'd I'd started working so I went so I left the the, the factory went and worked in the pub got a job in and left there got a job in the haulage company got sacked from there and got a job in got a job back at the factory during this period I did have a job temporarily in an old people's home well a residential home and I was a cook I got sacked from there after two weeks and apparently I was too nice to the residents now I, I, then I did a I had a few jobs during that period as well cleaning offices uh, and also washing up like a dishwasher, whatever you want to call it, kitchen porter. Yeah, I, I had a lot of cleaning jobs over those years. There was always a way of kind of earning a little bit of money. So I had lots of different cleaning jobs. So we lived near the docks, so there was always cleaning jobs going. Or early mornings, evenings, you know, so there was always something. I worked in a supermarket twice cleaning early, early in the morning. So that was all right. So I what happened then? So I left the factory job, went to Spain, came back. She kicked me out, so I was evicted from there. Cuz to be fair, I kind of did say I was moving, but then I changed my mind and she didn't want me to change my mind. <laughs> she said, nope, you, you you can stay for a few days, but I want you out. It's like, oh, okay. And then I moved again to... This is where things get very confusing. Where did I move then? I think from there I would have moved to the seafront again and it might have been I'm not sure but it might have been what did I have as a job I didn't oh no I know what happened I didn't work there I didn't have anywhere to live I became a nanny a living nanny for a while for a couple of people I met at the factory so they were doing night shift I stayed there at night the, the little girl was living there so I slept on the floor again in the living room and they would come home at night in the middle of the night to have lunch and wake me up so I wasn't getting any proper sleep they didn't give me any money like they said they were going to so I, I, all I got was really rent and food but I had no money so what I did is I ended up getting a part time job 
cleaning in the morning and I take the take the little girl to school and then they yeah they evicted me because they didn't need me anymore so I moved into from there blimey I'm not even sure what I did then I must have that must have been when I got the the job canvassing and I moved into a, a room and this was like 89 summer and this is good this is a good period living there I was buying the you know videos of stand up comedians and stuff so I was really getting into that I came out of my shell personality wise I was a lot more confident and then I moved out of the place I was in with a friend then moved again with him to a different place and then I moved out of there to move to London lived there for a while and then I came back to my dad's, lived there for a while. Then I moved out. Of, I moved from there to his new house, and then and that was about September nineteen ninety. And then I lived in a studio apartment, and I had to get out of there during the night because, basically, you know the the. I was upstairs and the his bedroom flooded and he blamed it on me. I know I sometimes wear the bed, but blimey, not that much. Not an elephant. No, he said, oh, you, you left the tap running and it flooded. I didn't leave the tap running. There was something, and even if you do leave a tap running, how is that going to flood? You know, I mean, as a, as a plug hole. And I'd never leave a tap running full anyway. So if it was, it'd be dripping. Um, anyway, I, I didn't I didn't leave a tap running. I know, I've know i always known how to turn a tap off. It's one of those few skills I have in life. But he was going to take me to court. And I thought, mm, mm, mm. And then I gave my job up. Well, I couldn't face going to work. And then I got behind on the rent. So I, I had to leave. And then I moved into a place, yeah, another place where it, I was there for a, only really for the for a few months, not even like a couple of months probably. And then I I left in January to move to London and lived in a place for four years nearly. And I moved out of there, moved in, moved into a place which was a sublet got evicted with about six hours notice seriously got told at lunchtime we've got to get out after work and I moved into another friend's place ended up getting evicted from there and it was a council council place that he had and then I moved to yeah I moved to Butlins then I came back lived with someone rented a room 96 and then uh, moved out in 97 stayed with a friend for a bit he was living in yet another sublet yay which meant that when I lost my job I couldn't sign on couldn't get any benefits or nothing I couldn't get help with the rent and it was a difficult situation so never never sublet honestly is you don't have any any rights at all uh then i moved back to the place i was before lived there between 97 and 2001 got evicted from there like a letter with notice and then i moved yeah i moved to uh a new pl another place lived there for a little while got a, a job selling mobile phone contracts and then I moved to be closer to my nan which was September 
19, no, two, September 2001. And I moved there, moved into a place, didn't really like that, so I moved into another, another, it was like a studio flat, flat, moved into a different studio flat, didn't like that one, and then I moved into another studio flat within the same complex. So three in that complex, but I was fairly happy with the last one. And then it became noisier and noisier. And um, previous to that, I think I'd moved into a caravan for a little while over Christmas. I'd moved out and then I moved back in again because the caravan flooded. And before you say anything, you know, oh, you've got a history of flooding things. No, no, no. It was the pipes burst because it was so cold. And apparently, because I didn't have any heat and any in the place because I wasn't there, you know, it wouldn't have happened if I'd been there. But like, come on. It wasn't my fault. Plus a tap was running. No, no. So I moved out of there, went back to the other place. And then I moved to, after, when I moved out of there, I moved into another room which had no heat in. <laughs> That was clever of me. And then I moved into the Buddhist community. And that was what? Two, that was 2004 I was in there. Moved into the Buddhist community. Probably March time 2005. Stayed there till November 2000 or October 2007. November 2007. And then I moved into the place where I was living at university till 2000 and it was two uh, the, the course finished in 2010 and the beginning of 2011 probably f January February time the beginning of 2011 January maybe beginning of February I uh, got evicted from there and you know another evicted and uh, I've collected I should have collected all those eviction letters Got evicted from there, moved to a very expensive room, which was en suite, but still very expensive. £125 a week. And that's when I was working as a counsellor. I lived there for one year. I couldn't afford to live there because I was earning very little money. Self-employed. Didn't have a lot coming in. I moved to another room which was a studio, which was a, uh, yeah, just, it had a little kitchenette, but it was the one that was in the basement that had mould and everything. So I lived there from 2012, probably a March, April time. Lived there all the way until I moved here. And I moved here in April 2015. So I guess I was there for three years, moved here, and I haven't been evicted. Yay! So that's how I plan things in my mind. I just like... The different things that are connected. There's the evictions. There's the the dramas. Which I didn't really mention. But that goes on in my head to remember that. There's the jobs I had at the time. There's the towns I was in at the time. Uh, the time of year. You know, all those little things that come together to kind of kick that memory in. I'm sorry if that was a long-winded answer. But it kind of... Yeah. I used to map all that stuff out. Like, every job I've ever had. Every... I can't remember a lot of that stuff now. You know, I think of a decade of... Well, it's not like nothing's happened because quite a lot of stuff has happened. But, yeah, just, I don't know. I don't know what I remember until I it kind of pops up sometimes. So, the next question, thanks for that one. The next question is, Jen, when was the last time you went to the movies and what did you see? I've actually given this some thought because I, I saw that when it was put up. Because it's a short question, so I kind of just read it. 
I can remember the seat I was sitting in. I can remember what's what um cinema it was. I'm not sure. And I can remember there was someone not that far away coughing. But I'm not sure when it was. It was a long time ago. It's we're probably talking when I was at university, so probably 2008, 2009, maybe 2010. I suppose it could have been 11 or 12, but I don't think so. I think it would have been before that. So, potentially, knowing the kind of movies that I like, it would have probably been a superhero movie. Because they're quite good movies to watch at a cinema. But I can't think what it would have been. I can't remember. And I keep thinking, was it the Fantastic Five? Or the Fantastic Four? I suppose I could Google that, couldn't I? would find out Fantastic Four movie. And it would have been, not the latest one, but the one before that. So the Fantastic Four movie. When was it? What year was it? Four youngsters. <laughs> Kate, no, that's a wrong. Jane, Jane, Michael B. Jordan. Blind, I didn't know he was in that. That was before he was famous, I think. So we go for the original Fantastic Four. Rise of the Silver Surfer. Full cast reviews. 2007. It, 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 it. It's possible, but you know what? I don't think so. Just simply because... 2000... Unless it was Spider-Man. I guess the answer is I don't know. Sorry. I can't remember. I remember going. I just don't remember... What movie I saw. It's kind of left my brain what movie was it it might have been just a random movie maybe it was a comedy but I don't recall I don't have I don't really have that memory of it in a sense of oh you know Huh. No, I don't remember. Sorry. I don't, I'm going to have to concede that one. Just accept that I can't remember everything. I don't remember. I don't. But I don't remember the last time I ate a kebab. Oh, yeah, I do. The last time I bought a kebab, right? Here's me, Mr. Generous. I bought a kebab. I don't know who was downstairs, but I bought it for everyone. I think it was a, a couple of friends that I liked were visiting my friend. They were his friends, but I got to know them. So I bought kebabs for us all. So I got four kebabs for downstairs, one for me. The delivery came. The only one that didn't come was mine. And when it when they resent it, what did they send? Chips and kebab meat. No bread, no pizza bread. That's the best part. Well, it's, okay, it's not the best part, but that's what I like. I like the pizza bread with the kebab. So yeah, I don't remember when that was, but it was a couple of years back. So thank you for that. Sorry, Jen. That was that's a really rubbish answer, wasn't it? I don't. I can't think of 
it's been that long. I mean, let's face it, if it was like 2008 or 2009, it's a long time ago, isn't it? 15 years ago. So, yeah. Unless I've been since I've lived here, it's possible. Maybe, you know what? Maybe I went to see the, the new version of Fantastic Four. Wow, maybe I did, you know. Maybe I went to see the Fantastic Four, the new one. And that's why, and maybe it was, it wasn't that long ago. Fantastic Four, 2015 film. That's possible, you know. Maybe I went to see it in 2015. Which was when I moved in here. Ah. It's possible. Jeremy Sir stars Miles Teller, Michael B. Jordan, Kate Mara and Jamie Bell. Huh. Jamie Bell. I don't know who any of them are. I know Michael B. Jordan. Huh. So yeah, I don't know. Sorry. I, it might have been that one in 2015. So it's only nine years ago. But I'll have been... Come April, I've been here ten years. Living here. So the next question is Nikhil... Whisper Wednesdays? I thought you were set with Boring Objects Monday, Trivia Tuesday, Q&A Fridays and Newspaper Sundays. Whisper Wednesday is a great idea, though I'm still excited about Trivia Tuesdays. I listened to this week's Trivia Tuesday five times now. I admit I still keep falling asleep. However, I was excited to hear all of your trivia. I can honestly say your voice acts like a melatonin pill for me. I fall asleep almost immediately, even when I don't plan to. I played your Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast in hospital after I had my third child. She's two now. And it managed to help me get her to sleep during our hospital stay when she was a newborn. Blimey. Wow. Your podcast still plays here every night as it helps to get her to sleep. Still, now. Blimey. Maybe because I listened to your podcast every night during the nine months I was pregnant with her. I apologise for the very long message. That's a lovely message. I've got to apologise. That's, wow. That's, yeah. That's, I don't know what else to say, but thank you. That's very kind lovely words anyways as for Q&A Friday I hope it's not too late to post some questions aside from Vinny or is it spelt Vinny so it's V-I-N-N-Y or V-I-N-N-I-E it is V-I-N-N-I-E but to be fair doesn't matter he answers to either <laughs> if I say Vinny or Vinny he, he still answers um have you ever had any other pets other than Andre? So, technically, yes. I mean, I, I had a goldfish called Popeye when I was seven or eight years old. I won him on a market stall at the carnival. It's one of those things I think you either you have to get the rings around something or chuck the darts and burst balloons or I don't know, something like that. And I won him and it was the highlight of my life up to that point. I took him home and yeah, Popeye. It turned out he actually, I called him Popeye because he had a, a very big eye that popped out. It turned out he had a diseased eye. And so it was almost quite a cruel name, but 
at the time Popeye was very popular and uh, anyway that's what I called him after him we did have a cat it wasn't my pet it was a family pet uh, again when I was eight but unfortunately she she didn't last very long because of the traffic and her name was what was her name Kitty Tigger her name was Tigger I think it was Tigger yeah and yeah so and then we had we did have a St Bernard dog near the end of their relationship so in the last year probably so sort of 1984 to eight, 85 to 86 or whatever there we had a St Bernard baby and it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew you could actually watch it grow it was amazing and so that was a family pet she was called Misty and she moved on to a new home when the family kind of went their own way I had a not a pigeon budgie I had a budgie I might have had two budgies. I think the first one didn't work properly, so I got another one. I took it back and got another one. And he, I talked about the cold. Seriously, this was the the cot. This is not good. The room. I, I had the budgie, but I couldn't have it in my bedroom because it was making so much noise. So I put it into this to a room that was spare. But it was a big, pretty much empty room. There was no heating on there. I didn't, I was a kid, I didn't really think it through. I was like, I don't know, 13, 14 or whatever. And yeah, it, it froze pretty much. Um, it's crazy. I, I just didn't, yeah, I didn't didn't expect that to happen. It was just immensely cold in there. But I've, I've told that story before because I gave it a kiss of life and tried to help it in that. But it's then that I realised that dead budgies don't fly. But I think what I was since then I had I had a goldfish when I lived in the chip shop, I think. I then didn't have any pets the whole way. I want to get goldfish. But I want to get like a, an aquarium. But just with goldfish. I don't want like exotic fish. Although exotic fish would be nice. I don't know why... Uh, I feel a bit bad about the goldfish. But anyway, I had two goldfish um, before I moved here. I think I had a goldfish when I was in London as well. But that that didn't didn't stay alive forever. But then I got a goldfish when I lived here. Well, when I lived uh, at the place before here. And... It's really weird because I just felt bad because I promised them when we move I'll get you a bigger bowl because there was two of them in like a wasn't a tiny bowl wasn't like a thimble but it was it wasn't big so I promised them I was going to get them a big tank but uh, yeah they they didn't they didn't last unfortunately when I moved here they didn't they didn't live very long so. Yeah, and then I got... So I guess I haven't had a huge luck with goldfish. 
Um, then there was the monkey. Uh, and then the giraffe. Yeah, I haven't had much luck. But then I got Andre. I had him for six and a half years. And to be honest, after after him, after Andre, I decided that nah, that's it, no more, I'm not going through that again. Because it was like I think May, May time, two thousand and twenty one. No, two thousand and. Yeah, 2021. I think it was about May. But come the next year, 2022, after about a year, I started to think, hmm, we're talking about the beginning of the year time. I started to think, maybe I'll get another ferret. And I was looking, and I almost had... Uh, plan to have two babies, a boy and a girl, brothers and sisters, um, to or was it two boys? But to move in here to to have them, and I was just waiting for them to be old enough to take. And then I just couldn't do it. I couldn't. Just couldn't. Couldn't do it. It was like yeah, just couldn't. So I had to cancel that and said sorry. And they said okay wasn't a big conversation I did nearly get a dog back in 2000 and so I moved in here 2015 I nearly got a dog probably in the summer 2015 it was a shih tzu and it was in the kennels in a like a rescue place it was a bait it's only a little one a little it's kind of a, a baby I think and I was going to have it, but then it didn't like me. And I thought, well, there's no point getting a dog that don't like me. You know, because I had this little romantic thought, idea anyway, that I'd go to the shelter and there'd be maybe 30 dogs all playing around. But one of them will come rushing at me with love in their eyes and you could see love hearts in the in the air and jump up at me kissing me like daddy will you be my daddy daddy will you will you be my daddy I think he's looking at me when I do that uh, it didn't happen and I went and visited the, the, the little boy again and he didn't even like me the second time it's cute as anything but let's face it find me a puppy that isn't cute and so I gave I just like decided no They'd found, I kept putting it off. They'd found someone else that wanted them. So I said, just take, let, give, give them to them then. Because I just don't know. I couldn't really make my mind up. At this point, I just like, because I wanted to get a pet. Because I could for the first time, really. That didn't live in a goldfish bowl. And then Andre came along. My friend downstairs had a, he had a, a ferret. And... I, he said, "There's a, there's one coming up. Do you want one?" I said, "I don't know," but I just saw him. Ironically, he hated me. Andre hated me, but I fell in love with him, like in a way that I don't think I ever have before. It was just wow. This little cute little bundle of hate. <laughs> he was constantly trying to kill me. Honestly, it was biting me, but it wasn't for fun. He was literally trying to end me. Um, and I had about two weeks of that until I think he just gave up and decided to be friends. So I decided I wasn't going to get anyone else, another pet. And then this little vinster in December ran through my legs because my friend downstairs brought him upstairs with his dog, Logie. And this thing ran through my legs as I opened the front door. I didn't even know what it was. It was so quick and it was so little. And it, it was basically planned. My friend downstairs, he planned for me to have him. He'd already told the person who had him before, 
yeah, Jason will have him. Before, you know, he'd even told me that he existed. So I was kind of, I suppose, manipulated into it. But hey, there's worse things to be manipulated into than having a, a lovely little doggy, isn't there, I guess. The weird thing about that is even, because um, I got him in the December, he'll be two, I'll have had him for two years this coming December. So we literally, it was 11 months that my friend got to see him for. And he'd said to me a few times, like the last couple of months, you know, a couple of months before he departed, he said, uh, well, you're going to end up having him anyway. Because if I hadn't had him, my friend would have took him. So he was going he was going nowhere. He was going to stay in this building. So if I hadn't took him, my friend would have had him. And my friend, he kept saying, well, you'd have had him anyway, in the end. And I didn't know what he meant. I think I kind of do now. So, what's the other question? So I don't have any uh, that. So I've, I think I've covered that. Since I live in Michigan, USA, we are surrounded by a lot of lakes. Do you have any beaches or lakes where you are in the UK? No. I mean, yeah, not near. The thing is, if you live in America, just from my communication with people from America, traveling, driving for two hours is not a long distance. But driving to Azir is a long distance. So there's beaches not far away in a car. But there isn't anything local, if that makes sense. So for me, nearby is walking distance. Oh, there's a, he's going to start barking in a minute. So yeah, to me, nearby is walking distance. But if you have a car, there's one, two... Yeah, there are beaches close by. Lakes, I don't think so. There's rivers. There's a few rivers um, along the way. But, you know, this this is quite a small country, really. Oh, the birds are in the attic again. Uh, they're probably getting ready for the winter. Uh, yeah, so there's not really much in the way of... Everything's quite close if you can get there. You know, if you if you jumped on a train to London from where I live, you see fields upon fields, and you see rivers, and you see it. It's just countryside. You will see towns, but it's basically uh, the the train track goes through the countryside, and the built generally built towns around the the track or a railway track. It seems. But it's not that far away. Not far in a car. But beaches, there's a few beaches. One, two, th if you If you're willing to travel an hour, then there's quite a few different beaches within an hour distance. If you're willing to travel two hours or three hours, then there's loads. If you're willing to travel like maybe six or seven hours, you can go to the other side of the country pretty much. It's not a big country, this. So, I hope I answered that. It's not a lot, but there are some around here. I used to live near a beach, and I do recommend it compared to not living near a beach. It's nice, just being near the sea. There's something... That's the only thing I miss, really, from not living there. I've not lived there since 1991, January. But the sea's the only thing, really. Apart from my nan, I missed her when I moved away. But, you know, as far as the actual thing, the, the beach was the only thing that I really missed. But I used to visit fairly regularly. So, thank you for that. So, da -da 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 -da. Kate asks, If a genie offered you three wishes, what would they be? Well, I can't tell you the genie. It's up to the genie, isn't it? 
What would they be? Um, hmm. I guess financial freedom. Uh, what other things would I have? But for everyone, I'd like it for everyone, you know, for everyone, all the people I know. Uh, I'd like to be, no, I probably wouldn't waste a wish on being taller, but yeah, probably not. I wouldn't waste it. So financial freedom, whatever that amount would be. <sighs> um... I don't know. It's like, how would I, how do I want to spend my life? And I, but that's kind of what it sums that, yeah? what it sums up to or comes down to is how do I, how would I ideally want to spend my life? What would I want to do? And I still want to do this, but I'd like to do this somewhere else. I'd like to do this maybe traveling. Even if it was traveling around this country, it'd just be nice to, you know, if I was just traveling around places, staying in places with Vinny, you know, uh, hotel, dog friendly hotels. And maybe not all year long, but just, you know, going away for a month, maybe coming back for a week, going away for another month and just doing that. And then eventually moving abroad and doing it abroad as well in Europe and maybe go to America Australia New Zealand uh, various different parts diff different places so that would be cool China I'd like I know it's probably a weird thing to say I'd like to go to Russia I'd like to go to some of those countries just just it'd be nice I don't know if it's ever going to be possible to do that but I'd like to visit those places because is yeah there's a lot of history there isn't there um there's a lot of history everywhere really so yeah i guess financial freedom i'd like for what i do to be more popular i guess but that's a matter of time or yeah i'd like to i suppose be better at what i do maybe I mean, if we're going to, if I'm going to be, yeah, if I was going to be completely, because once the financial stuff's taken care of, everything else is kind of doable, apart from health, you know, where I live, what I do, all that stuff is easy when it, when the, the finances is, is okay. So... And I could also promote this and put money into getting known, you know, all that stuff. And so, yeah, I think one thing would be to yeah, to there's a couple of people in mind that I would like to get well. In fact, there's more than more than a couple of people in mind um, to be to recover from what's going on with them. So that would be. I mean, to be fair, I would use. I'd happily use all three wishes for that. That's more important than money. That being financially okay. It, yes, it's. I suppose I just thought of the first financial because that that covers so many other things and also it covers being able to get the medical help from the you know the very top medical help and assistance for the people that I'm thinking about and maybe for myself one day you know, I could, it's, so it's, it's, it's a hard one, hard one, I mean, you know, I would say probably 
It depends how crazy the wishes can be. I want my nan back. I want Andre back. You know, that's the fact. I want Luke back. I want the original Andre back, even though I didn't see him. I wasn't seeing him anymore, but I'd like to... I'd like to, him to be alive. And... I'd like, yeah, wishes... See, there's certain wishes, because <laughs> there's wishes that would change the past, but then if I changed the past, then I wouldn't be here doing this. I might be doing something much more enjoyable, but I might not be as well, you know? I might be... I might not be the type of person that I'd want to be. I'm not saying that I am the type of person that I want to be now, but, you know, I might... If if I change the past or the very beginning of my life and then moved forward to now, I might not like what I see. And at the moment, I don't mind too much what I see. It's not too bad. It could be worse. It could be... <laughs> It could be a lot worse. It could be better, but it could be a lot worse. So, yeah. But this part of me would like to just be frivolous with it. Three wishes to hell. Just that. Just that isn't one of my wishes. Is to just be silly. But then, knowing myself. I'd want to do something big, like big, big, end war, end all wars, end all hunger, end all disease. But I know from a an emotional point, that's, from an emotional perspective, you know, ending all war, all disease and all famine. would transform the world but at the same time from an intellectual perspective it might not transform it in the way that I would hope things might go in a different direction again you know who knows from a political perspective and because there's, there's a whole thing isn't it like you ask for something you might get it but it might not be in the form that you want so it's like, oh, I want, I want to, I want to come into some money, but I might come into some money, but someone else might have suffered for me to get that money. Like if it's, uh, I've inherited, my, I've got no one to inherit anything from, but if I inherited money, somebody's got to have passed away for me to have that money. So I don't want that to happen. You know, I don't want anyone. To, to go through that so it's I guess with the with the wishes you've got to be really specific you know I want to be covered in money and then you you, you realise and suddenly you've got like 10 million pounds worth of pennies lying on your body and crushing you so like no that's, you see what I mean it's like it might be what you want, but it might not be what you need. I'd like to have some new curtains in here. That'd be nice. Yeah, I'd... I suppose those three things. World peace. Like, forever. Not just for a day, Forever. And end of world hunger and end of all diseases. That would be kind of what I would choose. But if I'm going to be greedy and selfish, I'd like to be financially stable. Just so I could, 
you know what? I know it sounds might sound weird. I haven't had much fun. You know, during my life, it's not been much fun. I've it's not been in, it's not been easy for a lot of people. But I just haven't, I haven't really done much as far as nice things. And I, I kind, of, I kind of like to. Maybe, have a bit of fun. While I'm still able to. I just don't know how. That's all. Just don't know how. So yeah, maybe. So that's probably. I don't know if I've really answered your question. <laughs> probably not. So Dimitri asks. Oops. Seems like I'm a little bit late. No, it's fine. I'm still, well, I'm just about to do it, so it's fine. Uh, if you don't mind, maybe for the next Q&A podcast. Okay, oh. In the last Whisper Wednesday issue, you, met- you mentioned you're going to take a master's degree in children's psychology. If you don't mind me asking, why are you interested mainly in this subject? I mean... Why have you chosen the children's and not some other branch of psychological science? Do you like working with kids? Well, the thanks for the question. Uh, the the children's developmental uh, psychology. That's just the first one of the modules. The actual overall degree course is a is psychology. It's not specific for, it's not adults, it's not child, it's not um, environmental, it's not anything like that. It's just psychology. But the children's developmental, I can't even remember what the module is, but it's basically children and adolescent developmental thing. Let me have a look. I can tell you. Uh, 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 I can't even spell open. Oh, here we go. Let me log into this one. Congratulations, graduates. I'm not a graduate. Well, I am, but not of there. Sign in. Sign in. Right, I'm signed in. So let me have a look at. I can tell you, student home, that's weird, okay, personal identifier, bit, 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 study record, so regulations, okay, the, the name of this course, this is the first module of six, so introduction to childhood studies and child psychology. Introduction to Childhood Studies and Child Psychology. Uh, I've got the de- developmental bit because I've been watching videos of uh, developmental psychology. Uh, so basically it's just the module. It's the first module, the first year out of six years because I'm doing it part time. So psychology is something I've been interested in for decades there's, there's different reasons, really, I would say. It, I've been trying to, trying to understand myself since I was a kid. And I've never really grasped other people. I've always struggled trying to figure out humans. Trying to, and that's, that's why I got into hypnosis, learned NLP, did a counselling degree. Part of the reason I did all that stuff and read all the books I've read and just trying to figure people out, not individual people, just generally. And I still haven't, I'll be honest with you. So I decided to really more focus on me in a sense of what what's made me how I am. What's what some things is very obvious like childhood stuff and you know it's like quite genetics as well there's a lot of things that are just very simple to figure out 
but I am very interested in the is it the minutia the the really small little things that can make a difference and I'm not I'm not doing this course in order to do anything else. I hope that it's going to help me with my recordings, especially with Healing Thursdays. See, I'm gonna, I want to stick to that because I can talk f more from a experiential or educational perspective, talking about things that I've discovered along the way. And I think, I'm thinking of maybe Saturday being Open University Saturday, where I talk about the only, you know, once a week, I'm going to talk, because I have to fill every single day up. You probably figured that one out. Uh, yeah, Saturday's the last one, wasn't it? So Saturday, Open University Saturday. And I can talk about, it can, it can just be, a, I don't know, like a journal or a uh, talking about things that I've learned during the week. So I could have that going for the next six years. The, uh, yeah, Open University Saturday. <laughs> if I say it enough, I might remember it. But I also want to do one day a week. I want to do my life story. So, mm. but I've run out of days because I've already got all seven days full. Although, even though I've got each day full, I'll still talk about what's gone on. So I might start off uh, Trivia Tuesday, for example. Is it Trivia Tuesday? Yeah, Trivia Tuesday. I'll still, if something's happened in my life and something, I'll still talk about that. Even and I'll still do the trivia, but I won't. Just like with Q and A Fridays, I still, I still uh, discuss what's happened and what's going on in my life before and during, because you know it's always going to be part of these let me boy to sleep is talking about what's going on in my life and whether it's going to the doctors or whether it's uh, taking Vinny out or whatever just doing things and open university course is going to that's going to be a, a big part of my life for the next six years 16 hours a week for the next six years so yeah so it's not, I'm not interested in, I say I'm not interested in kids because I did, I did counsel kids. I counseled adolescents and children. I even used to go into schools and it wasn't officially counseling, but I was doing it as a counselor with much smaller kids as well that had emotional issues or whatever it was. So, and that all came from trying to understand my own childhood, I guess, trying to figure out, or tr trying to maybe be what I needed when I was a child, to, to, to have someone that I, I needed someone, and trying to be that person when I was little, to, that would have perhaps changed my life in a more positive way. So that I'd be in a more confident and um, maybe a, just a better person, perhaps. It's, but I don't have that so much of an interest because I'm not counselling anymore. I'm not seeing people. I'm not doing. I'm not doing therapy sessions anymore. Uh, I don't do any live group sessions anymore with relaxation uh, don't do any pain relief sessions in live with people anymore uh, one on one so all that stuff's in the past the only things I do is 
these recordings. So I try and incorporate maybe what I've learned from the past, what I've learned from what I've learned from the past.